Good morning, everybody. This is Tony Hammond with another ICC Midday Connection. Um, I got up this morning and uh, I started thinking about Easter Sunday coming, Resurrection Sunday, and uh, all that we're going through with COVID-19 and, and what that's going to look like uh, with all the Easter celebrations and things that we're trying to do. And I got up and journaled some this morning, and uh, I just want to share with you what I journaled. Part of it will be reading and part of it will just be me stopping and talking, but uh, here's what I had to say. As Colleen and I prayed last evening, a prayer list that seems to be getting longer and longer and longer these days, uh, praying for doctors and nurses and first responders, kids, uh, grandkids, uh, our leadership in our state and our nation around the world, uh, the elderly, that's us. We kind of fit in that category these days, and uh, I know my kids have been real concerned about that. So um, I, I paused after our prayer had finished and I commented, you know, of all the emotions that are being generated by, by COVID-19 these days, uh, fear isn't really one of them. And it may pause and think about, you know, why that's so. Um, yeah, a lot of reasons. Maybe, you know, I'm too optimistic. Maybe I don't have enough information. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, if you, you know, have any media around you at all, you are very aware that this is a, a serious situation. And if you don't think that COVID-19 is serious, then you've got your head in the sand and, and you need to uh, wake up because this is this is not something that any of us have, have dealt with. It's not the first time the world has been hit with a plague, obviously. Go read. <laughs> Go read the book of uh, of Exodus and uh, and think about what it was like to be dealing with leprosy in the days of of the Old Testament and New Testament as well, and all the other you know things that have hit us. So it's not the first plague. It's not going to be the probably the last plague that we deal with, but it's it's certainly something for us to take seriously. But but where is the where is the fear? And um, here's sort of what I came out of this. I said, um, I think the reason is centered on one thing. We're about it to celebrate it. It's the resurrection of Jesus. One of the joys of being a Christian is knowing that our eternity is secure because death was defeated. As we approach Resurrection Sunday and the celebration of our risen Savior and Lord, I can't help but thinking about how dark those days between, just think about that, the days between the cross and the empty tomb, how dark those days must have been. Those who had followed Christ were confused. They were doubt-filled. They were disillusioned. Remember Peter said, I'm going fishing. I'm done. I've had it. Yeah, I, have you ever felt like that? I certainly have. And and that's, that's how he was feeling. They were fearful. They felt hopeless. Um, you talk about darkness. They put everything in their life, focused on Jesus and living their life for him, and now he was gone. He was dead. It looked like the evil one had won and that, that uh, all that they'd hoped for and longed for had been destroyed. But we know that that, that wasn't so. It was, uh, they were sitting around, don't you know, the conversations began to go around things like, what do we do now? What's next? Are we next? Are we going to be killed? What's the future going to look like? Those were dark, dark, dark days. And as one old uh, African-American pastor that I've enjoyed listening to preach to, and if you haven't listened to this message, you need to go look at it. Listen to it on YouTube. He says, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Oh, Sunday's coming, all right. And what a Sunday it was. Resurrection Sunday. Empty Tomb Sunday. Risen Lord Sunday. Promise Fulfilled Sunday. Sin has been defeated Sunday. Victory won Sunday. Hope restored Sunday. Eternity secured Sunday. 
It's enough to make you excited, isn't it? <laughs> Remember the words of our risen Lord when Jesus met Mary Magdalene and, and the other Mary as they came running out of the tomb. Uh, they were running to tell the disciples. And Jesus said three tender, power-filled words to them that I hope we will hang on to in, in these days ahead. What were those words? Be not afraid. Let me read the passage to you, and then I'm just going to close this out in, in a word of prayer, a couple of comments. Matthew 28, verses 5 through 10. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where, they, where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. So you'll see him there. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Be not afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So my prayer today is that we may see Jesus and remember his words as we face COVID-19 and all that it brings across the globe, all the things it's going to do in all areas, financially, uh, health-wise. Uh, you know, we don't have any clue about what the future holds right now. But the truth is, <laughs> whether it's COVID-19 or something else that takes us out, as I've said this a thousand times at Island Community Church, the truth is the death rate is still hovering right at 100%. And the only solution for that is the vaccine that comes from Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, he was paying for our sin, yours and mine. There's nothing left for us to do. The penalty was paid. He took death on himself, the penalty for our, for our sin, for the things that we've done wrong. It's not some horrible list that God keeps. It's, a, it's missing the mark of God's standard of perfection. And because of that, he says the stinger of death was defeated. Death was defeated. And he proved that through the empty tomb by coming back from the grave as he said he would. So when we know him as our personal savior, we can be certain that heaven's our home and nothing can ever take that away from us. The scripture talks a lot about that. It's all, nothing can ever snatch you out of my hand. So once we've received that gift of forgiveness, there's this blood relationship we're adopted, as Scripture says, as sons and daughters. And so we have that promise that nothing can ever separate us from that love. And my prayer is that today that that will be something that we rest in, that we'll rest in the assurance of his unending love, that we are adopted as sons and daughters, that we are his forever, and that we will be not afraid. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for each person that's listening to this. And Father, I pray uh, that you'll help us to remember your words, to be not afraid. We're gonna be facing some things that none of us have faced before. We know that we will uh, have to make a lot of decisions. And Father, we need you to give us your wisdom. We need your protection. And Father, we thank you once again that you have given the promise of eternal life Thank you that when you died on the cross, that sin was paid for. Our eternity was secured. Thank you that we are yours. And Father, we pray that you will simply give us your peace in the days to come and that we may be not afraid. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.